Just because somebody speaks English well, that has no connection as to whether somebody is smart or not, or whether they're the right person for the job. คนแค่พูดภาษาอังกฤษเก่งไม่ได้หมายความว่าคนนั้นเก่ง There's one thing that frustrates the crap out of me living, working across Asia, is seeing almost this arrogance, this hubris of English language floating across the region. I get to sit in a lot of meetings of clients. Uh, they're both international and local companies. And one common thread that I see through, whether it's Thailand, Indonesia, Malaysia, China, is that very often foreigners use English as a gauge as to whether something's going to be successful or not, something's going to be chosen or not, which ultimately leads to a subpar product. So in this clip, I'm going to share with you three of the key areas. Now, this clip is both. Both for people who speak English, but it's also for local people in the region. I want you to have a listen, and maybe you can share this with other foreigners that you're working with as well. Especially in multinational companies, some people may not even realize that some of these things are even a thing. I was sitting in a meeting the other week with a client, and I was listening to them go back and forth, and I was ready to pull my hair out. The setup of this company is very typical. You have a couple of foreigners that are in executive positions, and the rest are locals. The key thing is here that the service and everything that this company provides is for local ties. Yet during this meeting, and they were determining on the marketing strategy, the website, the copy, just because the executives did not speak Thai, they were English speakers. The whole discussion of the meeting was based around. The language of the website, but it was all in English. The language of what the marketing material, the Facebook campaigns, and all of these digital marketing campaigns, and they were going through wanting to check, and they were correcting English and correcting. Oh, we need to use this sentence instead of this. We might use this idiom instead of this, and they were doing it all through. Their English speaker eyes, where in reality that has nothing to do with the market that they're serving. Now they were speaking as though they were going to be actually using budget, launching marketing campaigns in English to an entirely Thai audience, and trying to use quirky language and quirky things that might be culturally relevant to native English speakers that have absolutely nothing to do with the people on the ground. And I think this is really, really important. The fact is, the services that they're providing aren't even eligible to be provided to foreigners. So this is an entirely Thai product. Yet just because the executives had a need to understand what's going on, then everything was channeled through English, and their whole world became that. They couldn't imagine a world, a company that wasn't through English. And so you'd listen to this meeting go back and forth. Now the way it goes, because they don't speak Thai, they would say some stuff, and then it'd go back into Thai, and then it would get totally lost in translation because they had chosen just one node that ends up speaking. Speaking back to them, and that person had a whole bunch of factors. One, their English wasn't fantastic. Two, they didn't know how to render one these idioms, even if they understood what they meant, which they didn't. A lot of them back into Thai, and then vice versa. And so there was a huge communication gap there. But these people had hired this person because they thought that her English was fantastic, and so by de facto, she became this key, powerful decision maker. That would say things on behalf of the management just because she could speak English, and she wasn't really a business person, and her education couldn't compete with the education of the rest of the people in her team. And so the result was that hours and hours, weeks and weeks, had been taken up talking about the copy in English, the copy of the ads, the concept of the ad campaigns. All through the filters of English for a market that does not speak English, and it's going to probably just fall on deaf ears if they launch this campaign in Thailand. And then finally, when it got to the Thai, that was basically just an afterthought. Oh, we'll just translate all of the English back into Thai then and launch the Thai campaign. No. If you're in a local country, whether it's Thailand, Malaysia, China, whatever market you're looking at, you should be using native speakers at the highest level of that language to be thinking out, mapping out the language that needs to be used to make it appeal to native speakers of that language. The local language shouldn't just be some vestigial. Afterthought that happens where English is like this main big mama that's going down, and then these things are just like hooking onto the mothership. No, it should be inverted. English should be the last thing that 
maybe those executives are using just to understand what's going on. And here's the thing, it usually happens that the people who are at the top of their game in the local language probably can't even speak English, or if they do, it's very limited. So recapping the first point, even if you are an international company, if you're providing services to locals, you need to have the first train of thought through the local language. Whether you understand it or not, well, that's really irrelevant because they're not marketing to you, they're marketing to the locals. And so this leads on to the second point. I work with a lot of multinational companies here and I will often get called into the final stages of hiring meetings with people that they're thinking of hiring, especially into key positions of the organizations. Because up until then, any contact with the executives has been probably through English. And just as I mentioned just now, a lot of the time Time, somebody's English level is not attached to actually how great they are or how great they're going to be in their job, how intelligent they are, how skillful they are. Some people might speak really, really good English. Maybe that's because they are a tour guide. Maybe that's because they've provided other services to foreigners. <laughs> Heck, I don't know. But too often it happens that these executives will just look at the English language level and then hire this person based on that. And it doesn't take too long for the locals who are working in the company to realize, oh crap, this person probably isn't the sharpest pencil in the drawer. And it gets worse because that person probably realizes that they're not as smart as the other locals in the company. They just speak English. And so they try and compensate for that, creating a tug of war, which is never good for the company. So very often these executives might ask me into the later rounds of the interviews with these people who they're looking to hire into the company just to sit and chat and continue the interview in the local language. So in Indonesian, in Thai, in Chinese, just to get a real feel for who this person is. What's the level of the language they use? Do they speak intelligently in their mother tongue? And it does happen that maybe this person has been phenomenal in the way that they've been able to communicate in English compared to perhaps how some others who have gone through the interview process have communicated in English. But when it gets to the local language, you think, oh, well, this person isn't really that great. And there are many other better candidates who have come before them. And so my role is to basically give a heads up. Ultimately, it's the decision, of course, of the HR department and the executives, but at least I can give them a heads up as to how this person might be perceived from a local standpoint. Now, it might be important that your company has English as a prerequisite because these people have to communicate with overseas officers. That's fair enough. But what I've found is that there's usually a middle ground and it's always easier to hire somebody who's brilliant and then work on their English to a point that they can communicate with the overseas overseas officers rather than hire somebody who actually totally lacks the skills that you need to carry out the job, but they just speak English. So really be careful hiring these people. And the other thing is that when you're hiring through English, you don't get the cultural nuances as well. If you're a native English speaker, it may not be PC, but there's a lot of stuff that you can tell from how somebody speaks English as another native speaker. And this is likewise in the local language. The way somebody uses the local language will tell a lot about that person, a lot about their values, a lot about their background, their education. And so it's only wise to conduct these interviews and have somebody who can communicate this stuff from a cultural and a linguistic perspective back to you as an executive working locally. And the last thing are English only policies. I'll often go into a company where I've been asked to go in and facilitate training or facilitate some kind of workshop so we can brainstorm and get ideas out. And one of the requisites often from the foreign management, again, it goes back to point number one, is that, oh, we need to do all of this in English. And so my question back to them is, why do we need to do it in English? Are we using this session to teach English and to see how good their English is? Or do you really want this workshop to be productive and do you want to see real results that you can use in the company? If you want to have a productive meeting, a productive training session, from my experience is do it in the local language. If you want everybody to join in the discussions and to be speaking optimally and giving their point of view, let them do it in the native language because then that means that everybody's on the same field. 
As soon as language becomes an issue, well then the people who are really good at the language are gonna be the people with the loudest voice. Heck, sometimes they're not the people in the loudest voice with the discussions amongst themselves, but when it comes to actually summarizing and getting it back to the executives, well they're the only people that can speak. And so the executives are just focused in then on the people who speak English. That's not fair. But if you let these people speak freely, brainstorm, and you have somebody who's facilitating using the local language to be able to facilitate and go through and bounce people's thoughts off of each other, that is super productive. And then only in the end, you would summarize it and have a way that could render those ideas, render those results in a way that the executive who doesn't speak the local language can at least get an idea of what went on. And they've built a network of people that they trust around them that they know that these are going to be accurate. Well, then that's a much better recipe for success. So maybe you don't agree with me, but I'm telling you, English only policy is not a good thing. It might make you feel good because you understand everything that's going on, but in doing that, you're just crushing the ability for most of your people in the organization to freely express themselves and feel free to be the most creative self that they can be in your company. So what's the solution? Well, the best solution is learn the local language. Now I get it, as an executive, you may not have time or the priority to learn the local language, but that honestly is the best solution because then English never has to be this obstacle in driving the company's business forward. The other solution is to find not just one person, but a series of people who you believe do have that level of communication and you can use as checks and balances against each other. Because if you only have one node of communication, for example, the HR manager, or maybe your personal assistant, well then everything is going to be filtered through them. Everything's going to be filtered through them culturally, through their own personal gripes, their likes, their dislikes, and that's a recipe for disaster. That's something that will quickly get under the skin of the other people in the company, and they're probably going to end up being this pariah in the organization, and you'll have a cold war happening in your company. You can have balanced information, balanced intelligence then, that you can make your decisions on. But the best way to do this is to learn the local language yourself to a level that you can actually operate, you can function, you can do business in that language. If you are a foreigner working across Asia, where does the whole role of English lie? Are you guilty of any of the things that I've mentioned here? Or do you disagree with some of the things that I've mentioned here? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you are a local, how do you feel about the role of English in your company and in your country? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to scan the QR code up top, come into our Discord server and continue the conversation there. And I'll see you on the other side.